Hello, and welcome to the Money Marketing Podcast. I'm Kimberly Dondo, Digital Content Manager. And in this week's Weekend Essay Podcast, we have Michael Climes giving us the 40 lessons that he learned in his time as acting editor. Take it away, Mike. Join us at Money Marketing Interactive London on the 29th of September. Just go to mmilondon.moneymarketing.co.uk to secure your seat at our industry leading event and hear from notable figures in the industry. See you there. I never forget the words of my old boss at Professional Pensions, Helen Morrissey, for young journalists. Don't rush to become an editor. After a year of being acting editor at Money Marketing, I now know what she means. Being an editor, but especially the main one, is an education on human nature. I would liken the role to being in in a full contact sport, combined with riding on a roller coaster blindfolded at times. I would liken the role to being in a full contact sport, combined with riding on a roller coaster blindfolded at times. There are many sharp turns, the occasional inversion, and you never know what curveball will be thrown at you. Some of these balls you will catch, others you will miss, and several will hit you. As journalists, and especially editors, are short of time. We need information that is stripped down to the essentials. So here are 40 lessons I have learned on the job that I hope any budding editor or manager may find useful. Number one, if you have perfectionistic tendencies, this will work against you as editors are pressed for time. Try to make peace with what is acceptable. Number two, if you have an internal critic like I do, mine is called Lenin, tell him to jog on. Number three, one technique I use for points one and two is to see yourself in context. There are always trade-offs. You do A at the expense of B. Four, there will always be problems. It is a question of what problems you want to have. Five, the creation of specific and genuine targets for colleagues in the context of appraisals is extremely hard work. It may surprise you how much. Six, you are the face of the business, but but might not be in charge of the money. That puts you in a tricky position when people want promotions and or a raise. Tough luck. Seven, try to figure out people's wants. Is it money, the job title, both, something else? That can inform appraisals. Eight, you can be supportive of people without taking on board their emotions. This is much easier to say than do. One technique I found useful is emotional freedom technique. It's a tapping technique. Read up on it if you are curious. Nine, people beneath your rank assume you know far more about what is going on above you at the top of the company than you actually do. 10. People above you assume you know far, far more about what is going on in the lower ranks than you do. 11. Discover as quickly as you can what meetings you have to attend and what ones you can avoid. This will help you save time and prioritise. 12. Try to make meetings have a purpose as it focuses them and they don't run on and on. 13. Please try to learn how to not take things personally, but at times you will, and so will others. That is okay. 14. If you don't have a temper, you will discover one. 15. If you have an inner warning that you need to attend to a particular issue straight away, then do. Don't put it off. 16. Make sure people take take their holidays, especially you. At times they will, and you'll have to pick up the pieces. But do check you do not book everyone off at the same time, um, as that can lead to being short of short of staff. 18. If you are paying the invoices of freelancers, make sure they don't overbill you. 
19. Only communicate bad, good or big news when you know it is definitely happening. 20. Tailor your communications to the situation. If you are in the office, why do you talk on email instead of face to face? 21. People make mistakes and things go wrong, but that doesn't mean everything is going badly. 22. Delegate, delegate, delegate. 23. But you need people in your team you can trust to delegate to. 24. People are good at different things, so try to delegate to them in those areas. 25. There are some things people just have to work out for themselves, including you. 26. As an editor, one of them is you cannot manage everyone in the same way. You might have to develop a different style for each member of staff. 27. You cannot train or prepare for everything. You just experience it. 28. People ask your opinion on all sorts of issues you don't know about. Just be honest and say, I don't know. 29. Cultivate and enjoy the pleasure of saying no. 30. Encourage the team to take any company training if it is available. Same goes for you. 31. Check how much editorship involves being an unofficial conference producer. Events planning takes a lot of time. 32. Remember to laugh, although sometimes you will want to cry. 33. Try to become acting editor in the summer. If you have 12 hour days in the first weeks, the light will, light will help manage your mood. 34. Being an acting editor is a good experience to put on your CV, but not always a good experience when you go through it. 35. At times, you will have to suffer fools gladly. Try to do it with a smile. 36. The editor owns everything, all the ups, downs, and everything in between. 37. To quote David Blunkett, who spoke at our money marketing conference some years ago, things are probably never quite as good or bad as you think they are. 38. Also, my grandpa used to say, don't assume the worst. 39. It's a job. There will be others. 40. You cannot fix everything, especially people. I'm sure there are more points that could be added to the above list. If I was to pick the most valuable one, it is you cannot fix everything, especially people. Another way to put it using a cliche, you can bring the horse to water, but you cannot make it drink. And that is the end of my reflection. Take from it what, what you will or not. It's up to you. It always was. I wish you the best of luck. And I hope my points help you manage the job well. Thanks, Mike, for another illuminating weekend essay podcast. We do hope that you enjoyed it. Please do keep up to date with all our new releases via Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and everywhere else you get your podcasts from. You can also keep up to date with all our new content published on the Money Marketing website, as well as our print edition, Money Marketing Magazine, so make sure to subscribe. Follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, and now Threads. See you next time.